All right, guys, what is up? We're here in an interesting game just because uh, the players I don't cast too often. Usually, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, when I cast, or when or I don't even know if you call this casting, when I uh, make a video of players, right, I press the start button, and it's pretty easy, but what I try to do is always get good players, right? People that are good at the game to play versus each other. Um, though, in retrospect, it might be better, instead of caring about who's playing, more caring about what is being played. So it would be nice if you guys told me, would you rather have me look at who's playing? So for example, usually I try to find the good players, like if Nepi is playing against uh, Gutsa, or if, if, if uh, let's say, Pox Junkie versus Mogabate. Like those are good games that I know good players are playing, and there's a lot of thought going into the turns, so I like watching it. Um, and I don't get as annoyed. Like if there's a mistake done, I, I could see myself making the mistake easily. While if it's bad players, obviously these two aren't bad, right? They're both battle master. They're they're fine. Um, <clears throat> they're all, they're not top tier, but they're good. Um, so I wonder if you guys would rather have me play or have me record games of anybody. It doesn't matter as long as they're just playing a a cool theme, or if you guys have more of a um, uh, you know, if you rather have me play or watch games between good players, that'd be an interesting thing to know. Anyway, so we're watching uh, Void Train versus Bella Lugusi. Um, it's Bog Hoppers. It looks like to me, it could be a actually, it could be a adaptive battle group. We do have the Doombringer as well as the Defiler. So I actually have a battle group very similar to this, right? It's half adaptive and then half meta champions. So you have like Gecko, and you have the adaptive champions, and then you play the uh, what's it called? You play Karch, obviously, and then you play the um, fin, fin Lord Neophyte. And that thing is insane. At least I find that champion to be very strong. Um, and this thing ramps up very quickly, especially for the 65 Nora. Right? 65 Nora, it's already at 15 damage. Um, just because of all the adaptive and poison one, right? So. And then on the other side, for Void Train, we do have the hyenas hyenas are actually really good too i put them tier one, uh, one for sp because i made a tier list and um so for the singular factions i actually put voil in god tier sp meta in god tier but i put hyenas in tier one and to be honest i might even put nowadays i've been playing moga so often i probably would put moga in tier one as well maybe not god tier it could be close but I find uh, Moga to be extremely strong. Now that I've played them for quite a while, like usually I switch battle groups at least, I don't know, twice a day. Um, if I'm playing a game, if I play, let's say, five games, I'm playing two different battle groups. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, two different battle groups. But uh, these days, I've been just playing Moga. I've been really just jamming. Oh, I kind of misplayed that. You should have done that first. Cause, oh, he already. No, wait, him. Yeah, because then you could have gotten fire damage as well. So I missed that. I misplayed that. But yeah, thing is, hyenas are cool. Obviously, first of all, they have the SP bonus, right? So no matter what, they're pretty good. Like, SP is a pretty strong bonus. But they also have the theme uh, dog pile. So if you think about this, they're doing... He's doing right now how much? One... Actually, two. So two extra damage from him, right? So like every dog pile means you can you can kill singular champions quickly, and because the dog pile actually stacks and it lasts a while, you don't have to insta kill to get the value. <clears throat> you can spread the damage over a few turns. But either way, dog pile is a pretty strong ability in my opinion. It's not very expensive. It's like two or three Nora, but um, you're getting a lot of value out of it. You're getting up to, upwards of like three, four, five damage um, every time you attack. Okay, right, so head drinker is dead. <clears throat> Now, let's see how this Gecko does, though. Gecko will probably kill the Flame Fist here. Unless he wants to kill with the Doombringer, right? You could do it that way. So, have Gecko hit the Executioner, get the Nora Globe, and then have the Doombringer actually kill the Flame Fist just so that he can get all three Nora Globes. He can still do it. Which is a pretty good idea, to be honest. Anyway, so what's cool is not only in the Hyena theme do you get the... Um, the dog pile, but you also get this, the resistance. So all hyenas get burn rank one. So for example, here we have the spearman with scour as well as burn. So two dots. 
Now, generally, Dots and Range Champions are very strong just because you can kind of attack the enemy before they can come into the fight and, you know, get their full potential value, like the potential that they do. But if you have two Dots, like, this is insane. This is six extra damage, right? So... There's the Neophyte I was talking about. He has a heal mass here because of the uh, Gekko. So let's see, where is it? So from Gekko, he gets heal mass, three. And then from Karch, he gets 15 HP. He's at 72 then with the War Banner. <clears throat> All right, so he gets this font. Yeah, and deal damage execution. Now, he does not get these Normal Globes just yet. And it's three versus four. We do have a Marsh Song running. Now, what does he do here? There's gonna be a lot of damage. Yeah, running Gekko away is good. You wanna keep him alive. He's very tanky because of that one with Nora generally. Like, if you can keep him alive, he's hard to kill. And FS generally also has very good kill potential, right? Or, sorry, uh, heal potential. Yeah. So, double dot. Now, dot is a bit worse versus tough, though, right? Now, I wonder if he's going to use the death sentence here. Ascendant. Yeah, that's what you want to do. If you're SP, just keep deploying. What was that? Ah. Uh, pull your army back first. All right, that's fine. He, he doesn't care about that too much. Pull for army means the next equipment... Um, shatters, I believe, or something like that. Ooh, I don't know why he didn't retreat though with the executioner. You want to keep him alive. Why would you not retreat him? Do you think he's gonna die anyway? Like he he leaves him so close to. I mean, he's in attack range. Yeah. That's interesting. He's in, wait. One, two, three, four, five. No, so he's not an attack range of Gekko, but he's an attack range of the Doombringer. And he's at 19 HP. There's really no reason to do that. He could have just retreated here. I mean, that's also one of the reasons you often see the Hyenas having so many ranged champions is because of the, the double uh, dot. Look at this. Here we have Scour Burn. Here we have the Rabbit and Burn. And obviously the Sabotage and whatnot. These Norgobs are pretty big, though. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know why he kept him there. Looks like he should be dead here, right? Because he attacks for 15 at least. And then he takes 15. Yeah, plus this is dead. No, he takes 14. 14 plus the 5. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. So the Doombringer actually just goes over here. Gets that Norglobe, attacks the Executioner once. This Enforcer can use, I don't know, Entangle, or sorry, Binding Chains, or he can leap, doesn't really matter. And then uh, the Executioner will die. <clears throat> Another Enforcer. Ooh, a Rock Trap. All right, that means he's not dead, which is insane, right? I. He's not in range here, no. He can attack him, yeah, that's fine. He is tough. Meaning the dots won't do as much and regen, obviously. I thought he thing is that was a bit of a misplay with the Doombringer to not move him down this way. He instead of went up. I mean, I, you couldn't see that coming too easily, but still. All right, so there is a buffer on him, and there's no dispel. At least that is actually does Hyena have dispel? No. Hyenas do have um, what's it called? Yeah, so he kills the buffer, or the buffer is gone. Now, I should have this kill, though, because, yeah, look at all these dog piles. See, look at his dog pile damage, 11 and then 12. So instead of 8, he's doing 4 and 5, four, uh, sorry, 4 extra damage, right? It's insane. Now, the dots won't kill him because of that tough, right? He'll take 2 from these, 2 damage and all. So he actually does not have the kill on this enforcer at the moment. Yeah, look, he survives. Wait, what? Oh, there was also the Scoured. I forgot about that. All right, so he does get the kill. Now, Executioner is dead. These Nora Globes are going over to Belagosi. So this is, yeah, this is to me still a pretty big advantage to Belagosi. He is getting the Nora Globes. Uh, we have the Dots going. The Executioner is dead. We have this extremely large Doombringer, right? 62 HP, 16 damage.
I mean, like I said, the tough and regen does help him, but still, it doesn't matter. Neophyte is coming. Yeah, this is just... I think what he has to do here... Ah, oh, these Norglobes are so damn insane. Like, I think the reason Belagosi won this is because he kept getting the Norglobes. So he was able to play that um, buffer. He was able to deploy. Like, it's four versus four. But once he gets these Norglobes, he'll be up like 70 Nora. It's like a whole other champion at least. And, and it's his turn at the moment, right? So that's always a big thing you have to think about as well. Not only... You know how many champions are on the board, but whose turn is it? Who can be you know doing things that cause value? And right now it's Belgosi. Can he kill the spearman? He does have what 15 dam. Ooh, even yeah. Okay, this is a kill. So spearman dies here from the uh, hippo stampede plus the gecko. Remember also what this uh, hippo stampede does is it gives the um, doombringer the adaptive. So now that's 17 damage. And 66 HP. So there's a kill. You can get these Norglobes. Now this is one Norglobe he cannot get, finally. Oh, blind. All right, cool. So that means no... Ah, it doesn't matter. Because right, sometimes on the Hyenas, you can also play um, a defense, right? But he does not have it here, so that's fine. Disease damage means it does go through. And obviously, charred and disease, which is nice. Battle leader and evasive. There's, the pack leader is actually one of the hardest champions for me to choose the upgrades. You should really retreat here, or at least get the Norglobe. You have the Relic and the Font, so at least get the Norglobe. Or, like, are you ever staying in double tap range from the Doombringer? What are you doing? Why? Why are you staying in double tap range? He's at 17 damage. Yeah, he's a tanky mother trucker, but still. Get the font, just get the Norglobe. All right, heal now. Heal champion. Look at this healing. 18 healing going off on the Gekko. And with the uh, one with Nora, it's just so hard to kill him. I mean, I have to say, I think there were quite a few misplays here by Void Train. Not getting the Norglobes. And then, uh, what happened early game that really ruined it for him? Like, he's still deploying. That's one thing I can give him credit for, is... As SP, sometimes you'll be uh, baited into, you know, playing a spell. But no, he's just deploying, deploying, deploying. That's how you do it. But still, not getting the Nora Globe. And he puts his Bulwark in double tap range. The only reason you would ever put your own champion that I can think of in double tap range this easily is because you want to do a counterplay afterwards. Like, if you know your Bulwark won't die, right? And you're like, oh, I want to be able to attack the um, Doombringer after this to kill it. Then okay. But other than that, just go here, get that Norglobe, right? What else are you going to be doing? This thing is keeping your font anyway. All right, look at this. 72 HP, heal champion, heal mass, command heal, and leap. Like, this is a, this is 1 to 1 HP to Nora ratio, 7 speed as well. Marsong. I mean, the Flame Fist might help a bit just because it is of a... It is one of those champions that I say is a tiny bit under-costed for its value, but it's not nearly anything close to the uh, Ice Fang or, like, possibly the um, Void Lord. It's just not... Yeah. Yeah, look at this. He just double tapped. He just took 16, 32 damage, right? Yeah. Is he dead, though? Let's see. He is tough. Yeah, so he's not dead, but still, he took so much damage for free. What is he going for here? All right. Remember, one thing that they are good at, these hyenas, is killing one champion because of the um that was the bounce. Because of that dog pile. Wait, wait, don't attack before you're in range of the aggress there you go. Good. So he gets that uh damage to go up. So he's not dead at the moment. Yeah, I feel like Void Train is playing this a bit like a new player would play, where they just deploy a champion and attack forwards, you know? They don't have a strategy going in. They're just like, deploy, move forwards, and attack. You know, just A-click, basically. Which is actually, as SP, an okay idea thing to do. Like, SP is actually one of the theme or the idea uh, factions that can just A-click. But, uh, like, he could have done a few different things here. He could have retreated... He could have attacked with one champion. 
But he basically just <clears throat> left the Doombringer alive, you know. Gekko is still doing value, like insane damage. If he attacks the Flame Bists, let's see. So Bulwark will die to the Doombringer because he had 21 damage. The Gekko can attack the Flame Fist, and he does not have any sort of you know defensive way to reduce the damage from the dot. And we also have Heal Mass, so that can heal him for nine and him for nine as well. And obviously him coming in. Or is he going for the Ascendant? That's not a bad idea. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Belagusi is just outplaying, outplaying Void Train at the moment. He's playing, he's going, like I thought, I thought he would go for the um, Flame Fist, but he's just, uh, you know, basically thinking ahead. He's like, hey, do I need to kill this thing? No, I'd rather kill the thing with fucking uh, Ascend, or Intensify, sorry. Yeah, so he'll die to the dots. This is actually exactly 15 damage, so he'll die with one damage overkill. He can kill the Bulwark with the Doombringer. He can heal, like I said. Wait, can he not? Alright, I guess he doesn't want to attack with the Doombringer. Well, you want to attack first with Doombringer, just with the melee specialist, though, to the two extra damage. So, attack the... Alright, so that's a bit of a misplay in my opinion, because he reduces his damage by two before attacking. Unless he's... Ah, he's retreating. Okay, then that's fine. Then it's fine. I thought he was just misplaying there. That's also a good play. Retreating from the pack leader. Pretty scary champion with his seven speed. And the violent, obviously. Yeah, there you go. It's now three versus five. Yeah, this is just outclass a bit. Outclass. I think theme wise, they're pretty even. If anything, I usually would give the uh, the advantage to hyenas, but I think that Belagusi just right. He just knew his. Uh, what's what do you call it? His. Uh, <laughs> he gave the Nor Globe to him. That's funny. Um, sorry, his. I guess targeting, what do you call it? His targeting was just very strong. He knew when to change targets. He played the um, spell for the the hippos. We have heal mass, right? So heal mass will, so much damage, or so much healing will happen here with the heal mass, right? Because these are all, all damage. Usually you want to just kill one singular champion, but instead we have many different ones being attacked here, and that's really bad, especially against heal mass. Yeah, there you go, heal mass. And the this should be up in like two turns, maybe one turn even. Yeah, this is gonna be what twenty seven healing. Uh, what? Why did you move that way? What? Oh, is he? Ah, oh, wow, that was really it decayed. Oh, that's dude. Who is this guy? I remember playing against him. I thought he was bad. At least I don't have him in my memory, but that was really well played. So what he did there, the reason he did not, he went out of range to heal the Enforcer is because of that Ascendant. Ascendant has the Sabotage Defile, which means he is um, decaying. So he would have actually taken damage, but instead he only heals the High One and the Doombringer. He played that really well. Dude, who is this guy? What the fuck? Crazy. Really well done. Evasive does mean that, does he have precision? Yeah, he does, okay. 11, 11, he's taking, let's see, <laughs> another 15 damage. Does he have the kill here? Yep, perfect kill even. Unless there's some type of hidden healing here. Perfect kill on the pack leader. I mean, he doesn't have the font yet. He could attack the font with his Doombringer just to, you know, yeah, there you go. Now, if Voidtrain wants to stay, he has to get into this font, which he doesn't want to do. There you go, GG. Yeah, no, that was just Belagosi playing really well. <clears throat> I think, like I said, generally the themes are pretty even, but uh, good game, really well played.